A few days ago, I posted this video that went a little bit viral, at least for me. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a few pictures around my house. I'm gonna purposely underexpose some. I don't know, that seems like enough. So I've got the new UT2 plugged in over ethernet, uh, just for speed purposes, but it would work over Wi-Fi. All I have to do is plug in this memory card and automatically, the image is gonna be backed up, of course, to the two internal drives on this, but also detect any new raw files that it's never seen before and send them up to the cloud for AI editing using my unique look in Imagine. Let's take a look at my computer. Okay, just got the text message alert, uploading 13 images and editing started. And just got the editing complete notification. And here's my absolute favorite part. So because it's a NAS that's connected over my network, I can access the folder directly on my laptop here. And remember, all I've done is insert the memory card, see the project started text message and the project completed text message. And in my folder of raw files here, I can click and drag the whole folder or all the raw files directly into Lightroom import them. You can see how over the place my exposures were, right? And all of the edits are going to be applied at import now, ready for me to take a manual pass and make any adjustments. Uh, yeah, all I, all I had to do is insert my memory card. That's wild. So it turns out my dream workflow that I've had for almost like four or five years now um, is something that's shared by a lot of photographers and probably videographers as well. Right out of the gate, let me just state up front that this is not an ad, this is not a sponsored post. I have no affiliation with Unified Drive, which is the piece of hardware I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. It's what enabled this workflow. Although you can run this code and workflow on most any computer, what makes it really, really streamlined is the fact that the UT2 was just released by Unified Drive. We'll get into that in a second. And I just want to reiterate, none of the services or tools that are mentioned in this video uh, like paid me to make this. This is simply a workflow that I developed literally last week, sat down and coded myself. If anything, you could consider this supported by my patrons. And I'm going to share a lot more ongoing updates and modifications to this workflow over on my Patreon. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about throughout this entire video, but you're on my Patreon, I am happy to help you as much as I can get this working uh, on your system. So as always, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Okay, so back to this. Uh, this is the UT2. Uh, portable NAS that was released via a Kickstarter campaign. I think they launched the actual campaign like middle of this year or something. And then I finally just randomly got mine in the mail last week. So what this is, is a NAS. So it is a network attached storage drive that has battery power. So I could actually disconnect it from battery if I wanted to for about up to an hour, I think they said. Uh, I'm gonna leave it plugged in just so nothing goes wrong during the video. And then I've also got it plugged into uh, directly over ethernet again for reliability and speed, but you can connect it over Wi-Fi to your network. You can broadcast a Wi-Fi hotspot if you've got it connected over ethernet, which is cool. And it's got tons of memory card imports there. You've got USB-C, uh, USB type SD and CF Express. So that's pretty wonderful. And this is the tool that essentially allows you to just insert a memory card, double tap a button, and then start to see edits come through. I'm gonna take you through that whole process again in a second, diving into the code, running the code, showing you the logs of the code as it runs. But yeah, this little box is proving to be pretty handy. I don't know that I would call this video a full review of it, but so far it's proving to be pretty great. Now, one of the cool things about it, if we jump over here to um, Mac OS, is that they actually developed their own operating system that runs on this. So this device itself is its own computer, the way a lot of NAS systems kind of work. It's, it's basically like that, but the interface looks like this. Um, so right now I am networked in and just uh, open the app and logged in. You can browse all your folders and files, imported stuff. Uh, but what's really cool is it's all a Linux based system. So you can actually quite easily run code. Uh, and if you're at all comfortable with any simple command line stuff, uh, it's really, really easy to run said code. So one app that comes installed on the ET2 is Docker, which allows you to basically download images of other pieces of software or what have you. I downloaded an image of Ubuntu. And so that basically allows me to run a contained version of Ubuntu right on this device. And I can easily SSH into it, which allows me to actually run the code that I wanna show you in just one second. So I keep the code stored in this folder and I'm gonna go ahead and do just a test run before we open the code. So it's just Python three, imagine local 
ba 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 processor py. Now you might be looking at some of the other uh, things in this folder, and I am working on a secondary version of the code that will actually do duplicate detection. So right now you insert your memory card, every photo that's on that memory card gets sent up for editing, the edits redownloaded. There are probably a lot of situations where you're not gonna wanna do that because a lot of photos people take aren't necessary, right? So there are some third-party solutions I'm hoping to be able to tap into eventually, but right now uh, I haven't found anything that works really well for machine learning, AI, culling. So you can surface some higher quality images that should be edited first, but I'm working on building out my own duplicate detection right now, which is this Imagine with duplicate uh, Python code. But right now I'm just gonna show you the full any new raw file that it detects, it sends off for editing because that is like the core of what I have developed right now and is really, really reliable. And oh yeah, by the way, I have developed this entirely on my own. Uh, I've just been glued to my computer, basically relearning all my computer science and information science uh, courses from like over a decade ago. But okay, right now the code is running. So it's constantly checking uh, the monitored folder that I have established, which is just called imported. Now, if you actually have the UT2, um, I'll show you where you can define where stuff gets imported. So it's this plug back icon here. This is where you can define if you insert a memory card, what happens automatically. So here I've got storage path set to this folder called imported. Um, it's incremental, so it's only new images that have never been imported before, but you could have it do a full backup of everything every time you insert it. But you can modify those settings here under modify. So I'm gonna close plug backup right now because I've already got it running. Okay, and just to walk you through, you can read here on my screen and I'm also gonna describe it. First thing this code does is constantly monitor a defined folder. So anything in the imported directory and any subfolders within it, if there is a raw file added in any way, even if I just manually copy something into it or it's network attached and I copy it from one Computer. If any new raw files are detected, um, they will be uh, basically grouped together in a batch. And after a certain period of time, I've oscillated between 10 seconds and 60 seconds, but I'm still playing around right now. But after a certain period of time where no new raw files have been added, it'll treat all the detected raw files as a batch and send it up to Imagine AI for editing. And we'll talk more about Imagine in a second. I've just inserted my memory card, and I think it's got about 30 or 40 images from uh, a wedding that I just shot. So the exposure is a little bit varied and it's just got a bunch of different examples that we can look at so you can actually see the quality of the editing. And all the raw files are sent off to Imagine, uh, which is this company here, and they've got an API that you can hook into if you know how to work with code and APIs. And they guide you through all the different processes of authentication, uh, how you choose your AI profile, um, which is something that I trained on 35,000 of my own raw files. So Imagine lets you create your own custom editing profiles that are trained on however many images you send it. So I trained one on 35,000 raw images that I edited by hand. So the look and feel of all the edits I'm getting back aren't just a blanket preset. It is reactive to the decisions I made in 35,000 other examples that it has to uh, draw from. And anyway, their API is something you need to request access to. If you're an Imagine user, just send them an email, ask for API access, and they'll give you a key, which you can then, if you download this code, put in your own API key and be on your way. But yeah, all the actual editing is done on Imagine, not on device. Because one, that's way beyond my skill set. There are entire companies that are working on AI editing. There's no way I could do that myself. And two, I don't think it's gonna run on this device very well. But okay, memory card's inserted, and now it's starting the process of importing raw files. Hopefully. Okay, so it found initially 12 new raw files, so it's still copying over, it found another six. I can also monitor uh, what's going on here if I just go to the directory. Okay. So no new raw files were added for 10 seconds. So that means all of this were treated as a batch. A new project was created and it is being sent up to Imagine. It's already sent. And I've tied my code into a service called Twilio, which is really useful because I can actually have it send me a text message alert when a new project has started. Now on my Patreon, I'm gonna share two versions of the code, one without Twilio and one with Twilio because you need your own account uh, on Twilio for that to work. And as useful as it is, I don't know how many of you are actually going to sign up for Twilio just to get text message alerts. But yeah, I got this text message alert on my phone letting me know that the project was started. I've got 18 images in there uh, and they're 
and they're processing. So let's walk through one or two other aspects of this workflow while we're waiting for those edits to come back. Because this is network attached storage, you can easily turn on file sharing across uh, your network in all sorts of different standards. I prefer the SMB protocol since uh, it's pretty friendly on Mac OS, which is what my main laptop is here. And all I have to do is browse my network and you can see my UT2 here with the N6OY uh, thing. I'm not sure what that stands for, but I can click through the entire same collection of folders uh, right here in Mac OS. And so what's really great is once the edits come back, they're just XMP files and they'll be added to this folder of raw files that I sent. And I can just click and drag that folder right into Lightroom. Now, I got a lot of messages from people saying, why not set up a watched folder in Lightroom to auto import? And you can do that, but you kind of have to do it in reverse because Lightroom doesn't let you watch network attached folders. So I can't just say, watch this you know, imported folder on this network attached. What I have to do is actually mount a shared folder from my Mac to the UT2. I don't wanna overcomplicate right now. It will work, but I'm not gonna demo that right now because it's just one step that's a little too, too complex. And as I was talking about that, uh, the project was done editing. All the XMPs were downloaded from Imagine. You can see here in the log of the code, um, and a text message was sent alerting me that it was complete. And here you can see in real time, the XMPs were all added. I also have a final step in the code that removes all JPEGs because I shoot in raw plus JPEG, but it's for entirely different reasons than you might be thinking and I don't need them. So I'd like to just remove those as a final step. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag this folder into Lightroom. This should have all the Imagine AI edits. Again, this is based on my training, so it'll have my profile and white balance and exposure adjustments based on more contextual awareness. You can see as the original previews are rendered uh, what the edits are actually doing. And there's also a straightening step that I added in the code. Um, yeah, so this just like evens everything out so that my starting point to go through and take a manual pass is a lot more elevated. And yeah, I can spend that extra time however I want. A lot of these AI companies really like saying that it gives you more freedom and more time, which it does. Personally, I like to take that newly allocated free time and still edit, spend time editing just about as much as I used to, except now I can spend that time editing way more detail and with way more perfectionism than uh, I would have before. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the actual code here. Uh, some areas of it might be blurred out because I did what you're not supposed to do and hard-coded some of my sensitive information like in API keys and other things. The version of this code that I'm gonna share on my Patreon is gonna have a configuration file and then the actual code so you can enter more easily your own API key and information. And again, if you are an active patron, I'm happy to help you get all of this set up as long as you're running an environment that can run Python code, because that is what I've made all of this in. Okay, so walking through it, this is all from the Imagine API where you define your project type, uh, whether it's real estate, school, sports, wedding, all of that, uh, you know, Imagine has optimizations for. And this is the utility functions of the code. So this is where the process really starts to unfold. This is where uh, local files are listed recursively. There's a running log file that includes a list of all processed raw files. So it compares anything newly imported against that list so that nothing is re-edited that's already been edited before. Of course, if you know what you're doing, you can change the code so that it works in a different way if that doesn't sound great to you. And then here's where the actual interaction with the Imagine API starts to occur. I have two separate ways of interacting. One is with a single image uh, upload, and then one is with a batch. And it's written to go in batches of 10, 10 parallel uploads. So it's pretty quick even to upload thousands of raw files to uh, imagine if you need. This is the section that defines the profile key for your editing profile that you'd like to use and just begins the project overall. And then it constantly monitors the Imagine API for a completion signal uh, so that it knows when the project is complete, it can start the download of the XMP files and run the rest of the code. Here's where it downloads all the XMPs locally and then ultimately saves all the processed files that were successfully done to the log file. And then again, just starts monitoring the folder for new raw files all over again. And final step is it just deletes the uh, JPEGs that were associated. You could obviously comment this out in the code if you wanted to keep your JPEGs. I just am interested in the raw files. Yeah, so if this seems interesting to you, if you run a NAS that can uh, run Python code, or if you pick up the UT2 for yourself, literally all you have to do is go in here to Docker, use the SSH button here to get into your container, navigate to the folder that you've saved, imagine localprocessor.py, and then run this code. 
That's it, and it just runs in the background forever. And also, if you're at all familiar with Linux environments, you can get a little more complex and set this up as a system service or run a cron job so that every time this is shut down and rebooted, if it ever is, uh, the app is automatically running in the background so you don't have to go in and actually run that line of code every time. Uh, but this is how I leave it running, just like this. I don't need my computer on or anything. I can completely close out of this unified drive remote connection. And every time I insert a memory card to this piece of hardware, it'll send off everything for editing to imagine and download the edits. That will be waiting there for me whenever I'm ready to dive in. I've also added a few steps in the code that if there is no network connection, nothing breaks. So it'll wait until it's got a good network connection, again, over Wi-Fi or ethernet uh, before it sends off and continues the rest of uh, processing raw files. So I hope you all found this interesting. As always, thank you so much for your attention. And I'll be back soon with a lot more updates as I develop some other really fun tools that uh, are all enabled again by this really awesome drive. Yeah, I'd love to hear any feedback in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for your attention. Bye everyone.